Hello y'all, welcome back. Today we are working on the R project for the introduction to hypothesis testing part one. So I've mentioned this before, but part one and part two are really like interlinked with one another. And so this might feel a little weird because we're doing parts of the FRED method, but we're not doing all of them. Um, just bear with me. We're just gonna try to highlight some things to really solidify them in your mind. And then next week you'll do a complete FRED and hopefully all of the pieces of this hypothesis testing puzzle will fall into place. So just like normal, we're going to go to the shared project, we're going to go to Brigacre, we're going to go to Stat 215, we're going to check the box next to Introduction to Hypothesis Testing, we're going to go to More, we're going to go to Copy 2, we're going to go Home, we're going to go to our Stat 215 folder, and we're going to save it. Now, important, 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 because I still have had some people say my project won't knit, and it's because they're in my folder, so remember to go back to your home back to your STAT215 and then open the introduction to hypothesis testing. So this is what you should see. I'm going to shrink down my um, environment window and my file window just so we can see this best. Remember that you're working from the top down. So when you open these, you want to change your name um, here. Let's call ourselves today. Um, I don't know. I always want it to be kind of funny. I can't help it. Um, I'm going to call my, myself Pepper my dog's name um, and today is the day you put the appropriate date and then remember we're going to be running these chunks uh, from above so we start with this chunk at line 8 and then we'll run the library and then here we're running our data now remember we've kind of done actually these these things in the past the first one in line 21 is me telling our, if it sees a period, that's what we would call a missing value. And then um, I'm just labeling F and M as male and female just so that we can see it better. Uh, remember that in, um, in the questions that I would ask you on an exam or in the um, project assignment, I wouldn't have you do this. This is just something that I want you to know what it is, but I would never expect you to be able to do what's in this chunk of code where we're reading in the data. So keep that in mind. So now we're going to start with the observe table. So our goal today is to see if there's a relationship between um, sex and whether or not somebody rides the bus. So we're going to create an observe table, an expected table, and then we're going to do a chi-squared hypothesis test. And we're just going to, at a, at a very high level, we're not doing a whole hypothesis test, we're just going to compare the observed and expected and see what we see. Then we're going to get a p-value and we're going to just remind ourselves of what is in the notes. So based on this p-value, uh, what kind of decision we would make. So really high level, again, next week we'll do a complete uh, FRED method for this chi-squared hypothesis test. So I'm going to take the code over here for our observed table and I'm going to put it into line 30. Um, we have to decide on the explanatory and response variable. So would it be that you expect sex to affect whether or not somebody rides the bus? Or if you ride the bus, would it affect the sex that you are? So I think we can agree that it makes the most sense that sex would be doing the explaining. So that's going to be our explanatory variable. And then our response variable is bus. And then we had assigned GBSU to be our data. So if I highlight that and run it, you can see at the bottom of my code or also in my console window, this is the, um, the observed table. Now, one thing that you'll notice is that it has the total row and the total for the columns, so the total for the rows, total for the columns. That came because I used that code margin equals true. And then the use NA equals no is omitting these period values. I just want to show you, you do not have to do this, but I just want to show you if I didn't have those two things, what the observed table would look like. So I'm going to run this. Now you can see it has an NA column, and you also can see that those totals for the rows and the columns are gone. So that's the purpose of those two last lines of code. Again, I'm not making you do that yourself. Um, I'm just trying to tell you why those values or why those pieces of code are added into that tally. So again, I ran it again with the use NA equals no and the margin, and you can see that that NA column went away, and now we have totals. So that's what those two things do. So next, I'm going to create my um, expected count table. So I'm going to paste that in here. I'm going to change uh, the same, my explanatory and my response variable. I'm going to change my data. 
Again, I have the use on A equals no. So this here, this value part, this is me saying, okay, I'm creating um, I'm an object called output, all right? I'm just gonna run that line of code, ran it. No, nothing happened, okay? I didn't get the output. So I have to actually call for the output or have it print. So here, because I just want the expected values, I actually am just gonna tell R that from that output that we just created, so we created an object called output. From that output, the dollar sign means I just want this. So I just want the expected values. And here, when I run that, now you can see an actual table come out. So again, here, I'm running that. It doesn't do anything. I don't see anything. I actually have to call for it to get it to print. And then here, this is the object we created. The dollar sign is saying, from that object output, I only want expected. So again, run that, and you can see now I get the table, okay? So when you run these two together, so the observed and expected, now you can compare the two and see how similar or different they are to know whether or not um, you expect to see a relationship. So remember that an expected count is what we expect to see if there's no relationship. So if the observed and expected are very similar, that means we're actually observing no relationship. So that's the idea. So if they're very different, that indicates that a relationship is being seen. So I'll let you assess that um, those two tables yourself and we'll just move on to do that final chunk of code, which is to get the um, chi-squared hypothesis. So here you can see that I have to change my explanatory and I have to change my response and I have to change my data. And so if I run that, I don't get anything. Again, to get it to print the output, we have to put what we want it to print. So writing what the name of your object is in a line by itself will print that object. So here, I want it to give me this. I want it to give me the output. And so now I'm going to call for output. So when I run just that line, that's printing or having it show that uh, piece of output. And that's all that you have to do. So here is how you do the chi squared, but then to get it to show up, you say output. So I'm just going to check uh, on my own the R assessment in Blackboard to make sure we covered everything. Okay, the last thing um, here is the p-value. So I do ask you about that. And remember, it's easiest for you to just copy and paste that into Blackboard, then you know it's precise. Um, other than that, that's the, that's the whole instructions. If you have any questions, let me know.